I can't believe that we're here for another FAQ. Like time has zoomed by. It's insane. And so yeah, there's your spoiler. We're doing an FAQ today. And before I explain to you what we're talking about in today's FAQ, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. And as I said before, we are here for an FAQ. Now, I've been spacing these out every 32, 33 days or so. And so today it's time to do the FAQ thing. And we are going to be focusing on additives in soap as well as the usage rating of additives. Now, as far as additives go in soap, there are boatloads that you can use. And I'm not talking about additives like a preservative or a detergent or... I'm talking about cool additives like rose petals or citric acid or clay. I bet you can figure out which one I like the most. And so yeah, we're gonna further discuss some of those different additives and the ones that I like using the most, as well as talk about usage rate and how you can incorporate them into your soaps. Because there are a lot of additives that can be put in with the lye solution and also a lot of additives that should be put in in the batter itself after you've reached emulsification. So we're gonna get more into that in the video. So let's go to the video. Okay, so first up, we are gonna talk about citric acid in soap making. Now, for those of you who are familiar with bath bombs or who have watched any of my bath bomb videos or used a bath bomb, uh, citric acid is the, uh, is, we call it the activator in the children's classes because it sounds like, you know, making slime and then they sort of get it. But it is the, you know, going to be the ingredient that you use to mix with the baking soda and the water and so you create the fizzy awesome, you know, fun in a bath bomb. Now in soap making, citric acid is used for, you know, a different reason because, well, I mean, actually kind of, okay. So citric acid is going to the, one of the things that people claim about citric acid is that it lowers the bar, the pH of the bar. And I, in my tests have not found that to be the case at all. Um, we have, you know, so when you put citric acid into your soap, and if you're putting it in your lye solution or putting it in the batter itself, the citric acid is going to essentially consume a portion of your lye. And that's lowering the amount of lye that is in the recipe and thus increasing the super fat that is in the recipe. But as far as actually um, lowering the pH itself, I have not found that to be the case. I mean, and if it is, it is such a slight, it's, it's very, you know, it's, it's not worth actually, you know, claiming that it does really, in my opinion. So I, I think the, the biggest reason that citric acid can and should be used in soap making is going to be for the soap scum, um, removal properties. Now, and this is really important for people with hard water, right? Because hard water with all the mineral deposits and all the stuff, um, it can tend to form soap scum. I don't have any problem with soap scum at all up here in the Pacific Northwest. I don't know if that means that my water is not hard, but I do remember growing up in Colorado and wow, definitely some hard water. Lots of mineral deposits on, you know, the glass showers all the time. And so in a bar of, you know, natural soap, of artisan soap, and you have all the awesome oils and butters and all of that jazz, you do run the risk of a uh, having you know soap scum that will form easier it's also easier to get off but that's you know a different story whatever anyway citric acid in soap is going to really help cut down that soap scum and ensure that the you know oils are not binding with the um, metal and 
creating a scum or a film on your shower, which is awesome. And so that would be the biggest reason that I would add citric acid to soap in general. Um, also with hard water, citric acid can increase the lather. So that's always something to keep in mind too. And you know, that's awesome. We always like a big bubble when, you know, we're dealing with soaps, of course. And that is Georgia May's version of the rosé. She just did that one. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. She, it was her first ever rosé pour. Now, so when using citric acid in soap, you can go, you can either dissolve it in water and then add it to your water lye solution, right? Or you can add it to your traced batter. Either way works. Um, the, the, the chemical process sort of happens regardless. So if you add it to your lye water, it effectively consumes the a portion of the lye at that point. And it's a, uh, so what I usually do is for the lye solution, I go ahead and I measure out all the water that I need for the solution. And then I put 2% citric acid based on the total weight of the oils that are in the batch, right? So if I have 40 ounces of oils in a batch, it's 2% of that, so 0.8 ounces of citric acid. And that then will be right off the bat consuming the lye from the solution. Again, lowering the amount of lye that you have in your solution, yielding a higher super fat. So you could, uh, you should adjust your lye based on that, or you could not. I tend to go either way, depending on how super fatted the batch is really, when I'm adding citric acid, I'm going to be adding it to a batch that is um, super fatted at no more than 3% with my original formulation. And then I don't have to do the extra calculation of, you know, figuring out how much lye to, extra lye to put in really. And so like, if you have, for example, take six grams of citric acid to, no, 10 grams of citric acid to consume six grams of lye, right? Right, so you would take that and you would go ahead and you know figure out your recipe and add additional lye in order to ensure you don't have that super fat. But again, it's just, as long as I'm not working with a recipe that has super high super fat, it's fine. And it, you know, the recipe ends up a little bit more super fatted. And so again, I do the water and put the citric acid in the actual water. Then I add the lye, let it all cool down, do its thing or you can put 2% of the citric acid mixed in a portion of your water that you've reserved from your total you know, water weight of your lye solution before you put the lye in it, you know, right, obviously. And you can add that to your actual oils um, or your traced batter. Either way works. The first way you are consuming the lye right off the bat. The second way you are essentially unbinding some fatty acids to the, the what they were, they started with, you know, so, or emulsification, so you're unbinding a little bit of that emulsion, and then the citric acid comes in that way. Either way is great, but I would stick to one to two percent of the citric acid in that solution because if you unbind too much of your lye and consume too much of your lye, then you're not going to get you know no super um, soap scum problems. You're not going to help with soap scum problems. You're going to end up with a solution that is going to yield a kind of crummy bar of soap. It's going to be not fun. So that is citric acid in soap. Okay, now next up in, you know, my favorite additives would be clay, right? Like that bar, Hello Gorgeous. It's got three types of clay in it. It has activated charcoal, it has bentonite clay, and it has kaolin clay. And that's amazing. That bar up at the upper right, the muscafone, yeah, that has a lot of clay in it too. That has kaolin clay as well as usually a red clay. I don't think that particular batch does. I think I was out. But yeah, clay. I talk about clay a lot and the benefits of clay in soaps on the channel. And because I make exclusively clay soaps. And for usage rates with clays, that uh, I think the usage rate is one teaspoon per pound of oils. And that's not what I do. I use quite literally six times that in every batch of soap that I make. Now, 
Pay attention to that because I'm never going to say that ever again on the whole history of this channel. Um, yeah, but clay, it's not just, you know, one. It, so the point of clay for the one teaspoon per pound of oil um, usage, right, is uh, a lot of it's kind of old wives tales and it kind of works if you believe that it works or whatever, like adding kale and clay to the batch can help your scent stick through saponification so you have to use less essential oils or less fragrance oils or whatever and your soap still smell nice uh, okay i don't sure and another reason is that it hardens the bar which is accurate yes sure does and the reasons that i use it and the quantities that i use it in are um well because it definitely hardens the bar for sure it creates a big giant awesome lather for sure. It actually does uh, lower the pH of the soaps, which is very cool. And I had this really awesome day having a you know awesome conversation with one of my uh, chemistry buddies up at the university about why that is in, in soaps and you know why we have that. It was fascinating. And that's probably not information that you guys are very interested in, really. But yeah, it does in fact lower the pH of the bars, which is cool. And it also creates a very hard bar with a very long shower life. And then, you know, you have the other properties of clay that are sort of existing in the bar when you're using copious amounts of them. When you're just using a little bit, it, you know, it makes the lather, you know, a little bit creamier or perhaps a little bit bubbly, bubblier, depending on if you're using, say, a kaolin versus a bentonite. It can help with slip for razors, sure. It also has a mild exfoliant depending on what you're using and activated charcoal is considered a mild exfoliant and then but when you're using it in really large amounts it's creating something you know different it's not just to you know a, as an additive for the sake of an additive it's uh, when you have copious amounts of clay in your recipes it's genuinely contributing to you know well, the bar hardness and the lather and the pH and the I mean just it's a great experience and remember when you're putting things into soap right like additives be it your scent or your clays or your exfoliants or your colors and um, that those things are not technically part of the chemical reaction that is occurring right the only thing that you need for the chemical reaction is going to be your lye solution and your fatty acids everything else sort of gets trapped in like a honeycomb pattern around the new solution that is created, the compound, which is, you know, technically a salt in soaps. And so kind of the more clay you add, the better it becomes to a point, obviously, because just like with everything else in soap making, if you add too much of something, you will force the entire, you know, bar to do weird things that you weren't really expecting with the case of clay, but in the case of like an actual citric acid where you are essentially using up extra portions of your lye, you will cause the entire thing to fall out of solution. And that's not good. So too much of a good thing is also possible. But yes, also one teaspoon per pound, not a lot going on there. I would put way, way more. So as far as more additives that I frequently use and love using go, um, gosh, there's kind of a lot. So I love sugars in soaps that definitely can increase the lather and give it a nice uh, bubble from time to time. I don't know, it kind of depends. I actually find that the sugar additive is better if you're mixing like a juice or a you know fruit puree in than a just sugar, just for the sake of sugar. And I have done like the mango puree soap. That would be, um, I showed, you how to put in sugar as far as a puree grow goes into the lye solution itself, which is cool. For sugar, you can put it into the lye solution after it is cooled, or you can dissolve it in the water before you put the lye in, or you can also add it to your traced batter. That's awesome. Also, I love doing things with infusions, right? So I do um, a lot of enhanced waters. So teas, for example, brewing tea and using that in the as the water in the, the the recipe instead of just regular distilled love that i find that it 
leads to a more luxurious lather and a, a gentler bar. But as far as any real big, like you're, you don't get, you don't get a lot of the tea actual properties in the finished product, right? Because you have to remember with a rinse off product, you get there are things that will benefit the lather and you know all of that jazz and it leads to different it's cool but it is a rinse off at the end of the day but i do like the way that the soap feels after using a tea additive and so again i steep tea let it cool then add the lye to the tea solution coffee is another one coffee is actually a very cool one that i love using and the benefits of coffee actually do tend to survive the spawnification process and it also makes for natural colorant too so you can actually put the uh, brewed coffee in place of your water. I have used it up to a 100% substitution with no problems whatsoever. And it becomes an awesome, beautiful brown without you having to put anything in it. So I definitely use stuff like that for uh, my wholesale accounts that don't do colorants at all. And I do have a number of them that are just completely colorant free. If you're going to color the soap, it's going to be completely natural. And that's a lot of fun to to do too. Um, and then infused oils, really great. Same concept, you know, like, you know, a basil infused or a chamomile infused. It's usually, again, for my wholesale accounts that I do that for because it increases the awesome in a wholly natural you know, bar, which is cool. And what else do I love using in soaps? Obviously, you have your exfoliants, but that's just, I like a scrubby bar. My favorite exfoliant would probably be pumice followed very closely with jojoba beads just because I like saying jojoba and that's fun and I really do like the uh, that's the one thing that I missed when I stopped using body washes was the little scrubby bits the little micro beads in the body washes I, I don't have those anymore and so jojoba beads they totally mimic that and they are actually helping our fish friends now I have used for jojoba beads up to one tablespoon per pound of oil. I've never gone over that. For pumice, I have used up to three to... No, so my max has been five tablespoons per pound of oil, like really scrubby bar. And, you know, with those kind of things, you can totally just play with your ratios until you get the scrubbiness that you like. And so, yeah, those are the additives that I commonly use. I don't do a lot in the form of, you know, using... Uh, you know EDTA or sodium citrate in its like proper form I use you know citric acid and create sodium citrate, whatever and so yeah it's a uh, those are my favorite and easy things to include in soaps to up the lather to boost the properties to you know be just kind of awesome in your soaping journey if you are getting bored with just doing it regular like and that is a day 165 the FAQ on additives and there you have it a whole bunch of additives that I really like using and how I use them now this is a very small list of the additives that I have used and that list is a very small list of the additives that are out there to use there are always new things that people are trying to put into soap to see what it does or if it can be done and if it changes the bar at all and i've tried a fair few of them these are the ones that i tend to stick to the most and you know play with most frequently within my soap because i do believe it actually does change the composition of the soap as well as you know things like ph and all that jazz i hope you found some interesting information in this faq today and as always if you have any questions send me a message let me know we can work through any problems that you're having or i can help you out with anything whatsoever that's soap related and uh yeah that would be cool your questions might end up on an faq in the future now for those of you who are subscribed to the channel thank you so much i really do appreciate you being subscribed and if you could uh just go ahead and nudge your little friend that's next to you not uh, subscribed to my channel and say hey you should i'd appreciate that but if not that's cool too you know do your thing. I'm glad that you're here. If you guys are interested in following me on social media, I am there. Do the things. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And that is it for me today. Again, I hope you had a good time today. And I will see you guys all again tomorrow. Bye.